Okay, so I want to introduce you to Mandible 3D, which is a really amazing program that's available for free. So I'm going to start off by showing you what it is and how to get there. I'm going to go ahead and do a Google search. All you have to do is know how to spell Mandible and add that 3D on there as well. And what you get is a couple of websites. If we take a look at these images, these are all images that have been created using the Mandible 3D program. And it looks like a lot of effort has been put into creating these amazing spaces. But actually they're the results of formulas that you can change, make small changes to, and get sometimes some unexpected and usually um, incredible results if you spend a little time and know how to navigate it. So let's start off with going back to the web. Now the file is stored on fractal forms. It is a little easier to go to Mandelbulb here and then choose the download option. It'll take you to the exact post in the forums and where that's hosted. So right down here where we have download Mandelbulb 3D for Windows. There is a version for Mac if you're running a Macintosh. And here it is. So it's a form but here's the file itself. So it can be a little tricky. It took me a while to find it the first time. But it's a zip file. They c you can just click on and download. It's not very large, but it is amazing. So Mandelbrot uh, discovered fractals some time ago. And this is a program that will take that mathematical formula and tweak it in lots of different ways and let you turn it into 3D. Okay, so we're going to open up the zip file. I'm going to extract all the files. A lot of times I like to just go to the C drive. This isn't a program that has to be installed into Windows, but it does seem to be important to allow that zip extraction to take place. If you just copy that folder afterwards to some new place, it's not going to link up with all the default parameters and stuff that's in there. So I really recommend unzipping it from scratch there, wherever you're going to work. Again, this does not get installed into Windows, so when you've saved parameters and stuff, Windows doesn't know what to do with these, and you're going to get an, uh, something like that. So you really have to go and run the program. You can run it safely. And here is Mandelbulb 3D. Now, I'm restricted to a single monitor, but this is the kind of program that really benefits a lot from having a dual monitor setup. So you can keep your formulas over on another screen. You can have your 3D navigation window on a separate screen and see the changes. You can keep your keyframes all on a separate page as well. So I'm going to work with one screen and just try and make this work. Let me close everything out, including that and just start with the basic interface here. So the first thing that I like to change up is the image size. I like this to be in a standard HD format so when I render out to video um, it'll be recognized easily when I upload it to YouTube or whatever else I want to do with it. It is possible to scale up and then recalculate and it'll take your same formulas. You saw a 2D version there and this is a 3D version of that same formula. So you can turn off the keep aspect ratio, and I'm going to go 1280 by 720, and calculate that in 3D. And that gives you more of the widescreen version for HD, 720p. Um, now for, this, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and ask it to downscale so that it will render faster and everything will fit on the screen, and that way I can use this space as if it were my second monitor. But rendering things out at 640 by 360 does happen a lot quicker, but then you're talking about a standard definition. And uh, maybe for a first version, a trial, or whatever, it's good to work with that. But I really recommend starting at 1280 by 720. Okay, so as you can see, we have a bulbous shape here. Uh, let me start off with just the lighting. If I click on lighting, it does bring up the lighting tab over on the right. So I'm going to resize my window like this so that you can see the lighting tab as well. So the lighting has a lot of options. This whole program is just filled with all sorts of sliders and buttons and 
Let me just start with some of the simple stuff I've figured out so far. So these are some presets for colors. And let me just start with the first one and it will change both the background color and the color of the actual mandible. And you can see that the map here of these colors corresponds to what we're seeing on the mandible. And if you click on it, you can change these colors to others by right clicking on them and you'll see the change. It's the easiest way to really find out what does this all mean. So you can click and come up with your own one. You can slide them around so the colors kind of start in different places. You can come up with some really high contrast areas. It's great to come up with your own set of colors and it is possible to save those as well. So let me pick just something slightly different, a little brighter say. Anyway, there's a lot that you can do to make yours look like nobody else's. And you can really, there's a lot of different ones. You can have a lot of shading. I think you can actually delete these as well. Click on it, press delete. No, nope, I don't remember how. So, there's some different colors. Again, there's some presets. This one uses uh, specular, which is the shininess of white, and so you can see the little bits of white that are in there. Um, you can change that so you get a different color for the specularity. This is the top one here, so if I change that to, uh, let's see, let me change it to something really different. And you'd have to do that for several of them, remove these all the way over and just change a couple. Let me see if this actually works. It's some of the ones that are inside there. This must be transparency. Again, I have only started to scratch the surface with this. So you got to figure out how that works. You can just start with a nice golden one and we'll just go with that for now. There is some advanced features here for making things fog out in the distance and changing the background picture. Um, definitely experiment with some of those things. Okay, so that's the basics of lighting. There are individual lights that you can turn on as well. I can turn on a light and then move it around as a positional. That's the global light. We have one visible. If you do positional lighting, you can actually see there's a little light there. And you can just leave your mandible in place and move this light around with your keyframes. It will go right through it. So positioning it can't, to go fly around can be a little tricky. But there is an X, Y, and Z position. So you can bring it closer to you. Have it fly towards the camera, as you see there. So I think more than anything, I'm showing how little I actually know about this. Let's go back to a global light and just recalculate that. Okay, so now let's take a look at the formulas. I'm going to close up lighting, click on formulas. It's going to open up over here. And I'm going to take a view here of formula one. This is the basic integer power. It was discovered that eight gave you the nicest shape. If you change that to another number, you can recalculate and you'll see that it actually changes the shape of it. So it is possible to render out something that you're not moving the camera or the view, it's just changing shape right in front of your eyes. If you go too far on any of these, finding the right number sets is the whole key to really being a Mandelnaut and exploring this new world that we've got of mathematics. So if you add a second formula, it's like adding a second layer on top of the calculation. And there are so many formulas that are built in here for you to experiment with. There are so many possibilities. It just, it's infinite. It really is. One of the fun ones that we found is Amazing Box. And you can calculate that and it makes some changes to it and makes it kind of some squarish regularity there. And you can change some of these numbers as well. Sometimes changing just a tiny bit of the number makes big changes. Sometimes you make a change and it totally goes away. So you really just have to experiment and be willing to go back and try other numbers. Experiment how much folding goes on here. Put in 
If, if a single integer change makes too much of a difference, then you might change a tenth or even a thousandth and see what you get. So you can actually take off these formulas, change it back to the way it was, change it to another one and see what you get. Sometimes you get wispy shapes, sometimes you get really concrete squarish shapes. It's just really up to you to explore and try different things. Now the more layers that you add of formulas, it does take longer. So just keep that in mind. Three and four and five formulas doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Sometimes it just kind of smears it out and you get weird random stuff. So it's up to you to find the next great formula combination.